A warm greetings to you from myself and the Southern Counties Baptist Association team. This video reflection follows on from a time of reflection that was held yesterday across the association by Zoom. Everyone was invited to it. Those that were there noticed a number of things in particular, noticed some things that might be of God at this time and how we might respond to it. It's just the very beginnings of the conversation and there'll be more coming out about what uh, what emerged. But uh, one of the things that came out was around the whole area of appreciation and social justice. Appreciation of uh, kindness and volunteering, appreciation of those on the front line and the tremendous work that they've done. Appreciation too of those that do regular work and regular jobs that have enabled society to keep going. But an acknowledgement that some of those very same people are the lowest paid, the ones that have the least security in their work, and a desire for equality and a better compensation for those people so that they actually have better choices that they can make as well. And of course it's no accident that the whole area of social justice came out at the same time as uh, many protests are taking place quite rightly after the killing of George Floyd and of course the killing of other people in the States but also mistreatment in other parts of the world as well. I've been reminded, as many of us will have been, of Rosa Parks and her standing up for her rights on that segregated bus in Montgomery on the 1st of December 1955 and refusing to give up her seat to a white person. Sometimes people think that she was quite old. She wasn't. She was just 42. Sometimes people think that perhaps she was particularly weary. She wasn't particularly weary, just normally tired. But she was tired in one sense, she says, which is, I was tired of giving in. Rosa had a long story of already being involved in civil rights action and action for the rights of black people. But she was actually preceded to her stand on that bus by a young person, a child, a 15-year-old Claudette Colvin, who did exactly the same thing. Her story wasn't really known for quite a long time. She was just 15 and so it wasn't felt that she could really be at the front of civil rights activism at that time. She also fell pregnant and so it wasn't going to work because that was embarrassing to people at that time. But it reminds me of the fact that it is often in God's providence those who are little, powerless, not considered of being much note or influence, who actually get it and get who God is. Psalm 8 says, you've made sure that young people and infants praise you. Their praise is a wall that stops the talk of your enemies. Psalm 8 is a great psalm of noticing. And what uh, praise indicates is that someone has noticed something of God something that's true of God, God's character, God's love, God's compassion, God's justice. Their praise is a wall that stops the alternative fake news, the talk of your enemies, others that have power and misuse it. So there's something encouraging about Psalm 8 and the fact that those of us that don't feel very wise or very powerful or very influential, that's probably most of us that are watching this video, actually might be able to get there and discern something which is of God and respond appropriately. And of course, there's every encouragement in the rest of the psalm to do precisely that. Because when we ask about human beings and who we are, there's this huge encouragement, which is that every human being is noticed by God. All mortals, all human beings are cared for by God. God makes no distinction on the basis of colour or creed or any other determining factor. All of us are noticed by God and cared for by God. All of us, it says in Psalm 8, are also able to image God. We're crowned with glory 
and honour. We understand that we fall short of God's glory, but the intention is that we, each of us, can image God. And that's again on the basis of no distinction. Every human being, every group of human beings are able to do that and to image something of God and particularly image something of God's care for and uh, overseeing of the created world, the planet. So when we ask a, a next question, which is, who is it that can exercise leadership and govern? Uh, the answer from Psalm 8 is, every human being can be involved in ex exercising leadership. And so in these days, when we're asking fresh questions about the number of people from a BAME background who are involved in influence and power and leadership in our society. It's a massive question and a, a vital question because from God's perspective, all human beings are called to be involved in those ways and in that way. But then it asks a question of us in the church as well and how are we doing in terms of diversity and influence and positions of leadership. It asks a question also of us in the church in our sense of honouring people from all backgrounds, all contexts. One of the things we celebrated yesterday in our time of reflection was just the way that uh, in a number of churches all sorts of people are being creative around technology uh, are being uh, deeply dedicated in terms of making connection, even if it has to be socially distanced with other people by way of pastoral care and by way of exercising leadership. The way forward after social distancing stops, after lockdown finishes, will require, as part of our creativity, many more of us participating in all of those tasks of mission and ministry and being creative. And the reason why is that there are some great things that actually have happened and emerged that mean that we've got uh, fresh hope for being able to befriend and make connections with our neighbours and those that are beyond the church. But also we're aware we can't possibly do that and also go back to doing absolutely everything that we did before. And that's a decision that you make about how you order life, how you uh, live life and live life as churches. It's exactly what Psalm 8 indicates, that we have the freedom and the liberty to make those decisions. All human beings together are meant to do that. So an encouragement to us to keep on this journey, an encouragement also to understand that it doesn't in the end depend on us because God is at work. How majestic is your name in the whole earth. You set your glory in the heavens. And then the finish is exactly the same. Tops and tails on Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in the whole earth. God is at work inviting us to notice what's of him. God is at work knowing that actually this has been a torrid time for many of us. Many of us are very, very tired at this time. Many of us are concerned and indeed anxious about what it will mean for us personally, but also what it will mean for church as we go forward. One of the things that emerged very, very clearly from the time of reflection yesterday was the need for leadership teams and churches to find ways to reflect on how we want to respond, how we want to go forward when lockdown does eventually finish. And when we do that, we're being those that are made in the image of God that indicates something of the glory of God, which is that we become discerners and noticers. We reflect on ways forward rather than dashing into it. And then we're able to exercise leadership and make decisions in the way that we need to. God bless you as you do that. And just to reassure you that Many people have said from yesterday we would like to have a similar time of reflection again and just to reassure you that as an association we will, uh, we will arrange that so that people can keep on this journey of reflection, 
noticing, discerning and joining in with what God is doing.